Welcome to ATV News. I'm Shalama Lawson with your daily bulletin. Coming up in the program, two blind sports announcers are battling their disabilities to succeed in their work. Many Zimbabweans are turning to foreign herbal medicines to improve their health. We attend the UK premiere of a new Zimbabwean film. And Liam will reflect on a dramatic weekend of English Premier League action. Two visually impaired men are rising above their disability by doing things that are normally done by people with sight. One is a cricket commentator and the other watches live soccer matches. Two Zimbabwean men are living tales of the fact that disability is indeed not inability. They've put down the walls of stigma and discrimination to bring quality football and cricket commentary to the local and international audience. Dean Duplessis and Peter Dititi are two visually impaired men who have surprised many people at soccer and cricket matches. Duplessis' amazing qualities has seen him landing a commentary post with an international sports channel where he uses his acute hearing senses to comment and analyze matches. Many people who follow cricket are not aware of the fact that Dean Duplessis is blind as he eavesdrops on other commentators to deliver flawless cricket announcement. My commentary um, really started in 2001 when, uh, when India and the West Indies were touring Zimbabwe and uh, I decided that I was going to, uh, well I was, I, was, I was in the media center and um, I came across a, a good old, who is now a very good friend of mine, Neil Manthorpe, doing a bit of commentary on the internet, so a radio commentary but on the internet. And he actually said to me, you know, um, I've heard about you, why don't you come and join me for what is meant to just be a guest commentary stint. And uh, his producers and bosses really liked what I did. <laughs> and um, as I say, the, the rest is history. The commentary I've done, I guess, has gone to Supersport, but I have no contract with them or, or anything to that effect. Um, but my, my first um, work that I did that was broadcast on Supersport was in 2003 when uh, the West Indies were out here. They played two test matches and 5 1 internationals. Apart from his international assignments, Dean also does commentary for free and for the love of the game for local radio and television channels. Well, thank you very much indeed. Welcome back to Rari Sports Club with the news that uh, the Mashonland Eagles need another 109 runs in the final 10 overs of this 50 over contest between themselves and the Midwest Rhinos. But they're well placed, are the Eagles are 192 for the loss of four wickets. Fosu Matiz one beaten on 72 and he played very nicely. And alongside him, Alton Chikambura, who's just beginning to open up his shoulders. He's on 35 of just 31 deliveries. Um, a few moments ago, he uh, pulled Edward Rainsford in front of Square for a massive six to go alongside two fours. Now, this, of course, is in reply to the Rhinos' total of 300 for the loss of six wickets from their 50 overs. Just like Dean, the TT is also another visually impaired man who is passionate about football. He is a pastor with the Zimbabwe Assemblies of God Africa Zayoja Church. We my players who watch one system, you could talk to one watch who's out here. You are not going to go to what are out here. A Jennifer, you don't have to go around Jennifer in the panel passer. You may say to go to our out here. One of our players, a week, I found our a different occasion. He said his wish is to go on radio and television to do soccer analysis. Chandigan, you prefer Pasta said all visually impaired people should unlock their potential 
for excellency and fight to attain their dreams in life. Many Zimbabweans are increasingly turning to foreign herbal medicine to cure various ailments while shunning conventional medicine. Foreign herbal medicines are fast gaining popularity in Zimbabwe with some people opting to use the herbs instead of conventional medicines to cure different ailments. Most of these herbs, which are imported from countries such as China and Egypt, claim to cure diseases such as tuberculosis, hypertension, asthma, cancer and even HIV-related ailments. The most popular ones are Tianche, Green World and Forever Living products. Sihle Gumbo, senior manager at Forever Living, said their products are made from natural remedies grown without any herbicides. For me to have now a clear skin, I've used uh, the liquid soap and the propolis cream. I found that when I used this, they cleared up the skin and now I have a smooth skin. And I always wonder to say, if I had not used these products, how long it would have taken my skin to be back and nice and smooth as it is right now. Ruth and Yuda said she started using the herbs some three months ago and they are making her skin look healthier. Richard Rukwata of Medicines Control Authority of Zimbabwe said none of these products were registered. To be um, very frank on the matter, we have not approved any herbal remedies or complementary medicines that actually purport to cure anything. Most of these substances have actually been um, distributed on the understanding that they are just general health supplements without any specific um, curative claims. So to the knowledge of the authority, there are no herbal products on the market that actually cure diabetes, hypertension, arthritis, or any of a number of uh, um, ethical conditions which would require medical expertise. He added that there was no scientific evidence to show that these herbs were effective. And in most cases what we actually do is uh, we endorse that med uh, herbal medicines are not registrable. And this is after an assessment of um, um, the labeling requirements as I've said, because we actually have labeling requirements for medicines in the statutory instrument 150 of 1991, which are very specific to say if this medicine purports to cure ABC, certain requirements must be met. Now, with respect to herbal products currently, um, none of them um, or very few of them actually have any um, proof of efficacy. So we don't know um, whether or not these substances actually cure what they claim to cure. To the public, the whole issue around herbal and conventional medicines is like a double-edged sword. On one hand, the peddling of imported and unauthorized herbal medicines poses serious public health risks. On the other hand, the high cost of drugs, the dispensing of expired drugs in some public health institutions also puts the lives of the poor at risk. This weekend saw the UK premiere of a new Zimbabwean film. To the End of the Road tells the story of a girl seeking revenge for the murder of her mother. Many Zimbabweans attended the event in Coventry. We caught up with one of the film's stars, actor Ashley Majaya. Just wanted to update you on uh, the Zimbabwean film industry out here in the diaspora, mainly the UK. Uh, we're really working hard to deliver, you know, better quality in terms of picture, sound, and also delivery of um, scripts and film in total. So be surprised when you see what we're delivering because it's going to be amazing stuff. So far, I'd like to say I'm really impressed with what's happening with our movie industry in the UK. The only thing is we're a little bit lacking in terms of funding, sponsorship, getting involved in some of our projects. But nevertheless, you know, within our own community, we have resources, we have people with the knowledge and technology to make sure that we deliver 
quality stuff uh, in terms of sound, picture, and even the stories are even getting a lot tighter in terms of script writing. So uh, I'm very hopeful that, you know, in good time, you know, we will start to generate a bit more uh, publicity in terms of getting partnerships and sponsorship coming in funding. What? Also at the premiere was Tony Muliswa, one of the founders of Zollywood, who is hoping to galvanize the Zimbabwe film industry. Basically, Zollywood is an internet-based uh, website where we sell digital downloads, we do pay-per-view, uh, and hopefully soon we're going to move it move into the mobile uh, uh, thing for people to watch movies on their mobiles. But uh, Zollywood really is here for the Zimbabwe filmmakers and producers so that you can put your movies on our website and you get your money. Uh, and what we, we intend in Zollywood is to have transparency. Uh, basically, we will be transparent with everything that happens in the transactions so that the producers back in Zimbabwe or in the UK can get their money back for what uh, the work they're putting in. So Zolo is really here for the filmmakers. It is for you, the filmmakers. It's not for Tony Mliswa or anybody else. It is for the filmmakers. And we're here to uh, expose the filmmakers, uh, the, the, the Zimbabwe movies, and we're going to keep on doing that. There are more uh, premieres coming, obviously, this year. We've had a wonderful year. I want to thank God for that. And I want to thank all the supporters uh, uh, for that. Uh, for supporting us all the way through and right now I'm at the premiere for the uh, uh, to the end of the road uh, right now people are just coming in it's looking really good at the showcase cinema in uh, Coventry uh, so we, I will hope that in the next year we're going to have that but we want to have a calendar for the next year and this is what we're planning for Zolo planning the future for the next year what movies are coming on well, after an exciting weekend of football in the English Premier League, ATV football specialist Liam Thorpe joins us to explain what happened. Thanks, Shalimar. Well, firstly, I've got to hold my hands up, as most of my predictions on Friday turned out to be wrong. But in a way, that sums up the unpredictable nature of the English Premier League. Where else to start except Old Trafford? Myself and most ATV viewers thought Manchester United would beat Tottenham Hotspur, but we were wrong, as Spurs won a dramatic 3-2 match, their first win at United's ground in 23 years. United's defence was all over the place, and they were 2-0 down at half-time. They had a much better second half, but could not recover. Spurs boss Andre villas Boas said it was a special night for his team, and I think this historic win could really get Spurs' season going. Manchester City, United's rivals, got back to winning ways, although they had to leave it late against a stubborn Fulham side. City went behind early on to a Mladen Petric penalty, but Sergio Aguero tapped home an equaliser in the first half. The game looked like it was heading for a draw before Bosnian striker Eden Dzeko swivelled in the area and fired in a powerful shot. This is the kind of result that could get City's title charge back on course. Now, the one result I did get right this weekend, just one, was Liverpool, who crushed Norwich City. I also predicted that striker Luis Suarez would play a key role and the Uruguayan hit a brilliant hat-trick in their 5-2 win. Brendan Rodgers' team are starting to play very well and I can see them surging up the table after a very slow start. Now the big game of the weekend was Arsenal versus Chelsea. This was a tight encounter as we all predicted, but I thought it would be a draw, but Chelsea edged it to stay top of the Premier League. Fernando Torres gave them the lead with a clever finish and although Jovino equalised with a powerful strike for Arsenal, Juan Mata's deflected free kick took all three points and inflicted the first loss for Arsenal of the season. Now we want to know what you think will happen in next week's action, so please keep in touch via the ATV Facebook page. And I'll see you again on Friday, where I hope to do a little bit better with my own predictions. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us. Have a good evening.